cross-platform mobile developer you're gonna write one code base you're gonna publish it ios android you may be doing web as well you're gonna be swiss army knife of developers yeah i'm not gonna burst your bubble but uh supposing you have this dream let's go ahead and see what this new thing compose multi-platform can do the idea is that it's just like Kotlin multi-platform for mobile, but you use Compose, the same Jetpack Compose that you're used to on Android. You use that to write the UI for all your platforms that you're going to release on. So also web, that's going to be parsing Compose and writing the UI using that, but I don't know where that is in the pipeline iOS just went into beta, I think. They finished it, so we're gonna try it. Here, this is the structure you're used to from uh, Kotlin multi-platform for mobile, and uh, it's the same, basically, but now you don't have to go and touch anything here in this module. You might have to go to the Android module and uh, maybe specify internet permission here because that's that doesn't come out of the box uh, for Android. On iOS, you can just launch, make a request, no questions asked, uh, here you have to specify internet permission. So that's about as much as you're gonna to touch in this module. The one you're gonna be working in the most is the shared module. You have here Android main, common main, iOS main. These also I have not had to touch at all. Also the manifest here, I didn't touch. I didn't touch anything except this guy and specifically here. So I want to grab some results from SpaceX JSON response I want to turn them into our classes that we have defined here. And I want to use, you know, the classes and get the links to the images here. These are launch images. They assign a badge to each uh, mission that they have. They're crazy, I know. So that's what I want to do. So these are the classes I defined. I used Kotlin data class from JSON plugin. This just takes the response as it is and makes your classes. You can also define that you want them to be all serializable. So we're gonna be using serializable Kotlin X serialization. It will tag them, it will annotate them here as well. I didn't do any of this. It also initializes them as null, starts as val. Really nice uh, plugin, you should use it. So how do you do this? You have to first of all go into the build gradle file, importing Kotlin X serialization. This version has to match the version of Kotlin you're working with. There is an equivalent version of this plugin to the version of Kotlin that's most latest. So you use equal versions, otherwise it's going to explode. Then you have here common main. This block refers to this module, or let's say package, this is not a module. And then you got this block refers to this guy. And then this guy is right here, right? So you define the dependencies that you want both of them to use without any issue. So that's stuff like camel. This is a, just like Picasso, Ktor client, Ktor client logging. These are going to be used by iOS and Android in the same way. There's no differences. Also for Kotlin X serialization, it's integration with Ktor, Ktor content negotiation, Moco MVVM, talk about this in a second. These are all used equally by both. Here, however, Ktor client, this differs from Android to iOS. You need to include the Ktor client engine, whatever, for both variations. So there might be other libraries that do this as well, but most of them that I've seen so far just go in here. This one is an MVVM implementation or reference to the MVVM that you see in architecture components because this is not Android that you're writing. You're just writing Kotlin and you're writing Compose, but it isn't Android. This is something different. When you write stuff here, it's gonna go out into a final package that's able to run on both Android and iOS. The considerations that you have to do here are, are different from when you had Android. So you can't expect Picasso to work out of the box. It's not Android. So these are libraries that are getting ported little by little. I don't know how far they are so far, but uh, this is the one of the MVVM implementations that you can use. It's pretty lightweight, easy to use. You'll see in a second. So it's called Moco MVVM. And you got Ktor as, a, as an HTTP client instead of OKHTTP. Okay you get the idea. Here, what is happening in the view? 
I just grab an instance of the view model. This method is provided by Moco as well. It takes a unit. You go read about this one, what it does. And this is the view model factory given the view model that you are interested in. This is the composable. You give it the view model. Here I grab the state. I listen to it. This, depending on whether launches are empty or not, I show a vertical grid, two cells spaced by whatever. And inside each item of the launch gets another composable that defines how it looks. So this is the cell right here. And it takes the actual launch. Grab the image from this class, camel image. You just give it a resource. It's called async painter resource. This is what they chose to call it. Give it the path, you know, crop it, aspect ratio. This, this one makes sure that the image doesn't uh, get loaded into its actual full size. Otherwise you won't see anything here. It's not even going to load and it's going to eat up too much memory. So that's what's happening in the view. What is happening in the view model? You have your state, usual stuff. This method also by Moco, the one you're used to doing in Android. This is the mutable state flow you are used to. You grab that as a state flow. You initialize your HTTP client using Ktor. You install logging, you install content negotiation to be a JSON object. But these two uh, keys I found to be interesting because I was getting errors that the response that I defined in the classes and the response coming from JSON were different, some keys were missing. This solved it, both of them. Init, update the images, do the call, client close on cleared. On cleared is also by Moco, I think. Yes, so this is the same on cleared that you see in uh, architecture components. Uh, update images, there's view model scope. Again, this is provided by Moco. Again, it's just uh, the coroutine scope that you're used to using on Android. In here, you just, uh, you know, get the launches, update the state. This is the actual call to the SpaceX API, client get, and you just grab the body. This causes the state to change, this gets triggered, you see your, you know, launches. Of course, this is running as well on iOS, iOS, and that's about it, really. This is how you make network requests on Compose Multiplatform. Good luck getting hired as a Compose Multiplatform engineer. The adoption is very low right now. iOS uh, is still in beta. The, the integration with iOS still in beta, but I think this is going to go a long way. I'm going to keep following it. I like it. Uh, so I'll see you then. Good luck.